One of the big benefits of Kotlin is that it's 100% interoperable with Java. So if you're one of the many people in the world who has a Java program, for example, an Android app written in Java, you can slowly migrate your app over to using Kotlin instead of having to rewrite the whole thing from scratch. The reason this is possible is because of the JVM, or Java Virtual Machine, which defines a .class file format which contains bytecode. So both Java and Kotlin will actually get compiled into bytecode, which the JVM will take and turn it into machine code running on the device that you have. And so the actual language used to create bytecode doesn't actually matter, as long as the compiler, so in our case, the Kotlin compiler, can turn this into JVM-compatible bytecode. So what I want to show you in this video is taking a Kotlin program, turning it into bytecode, and then decompiling that bytecode into a Java program. So this is a really nice way that you can take a look at Kotlin language features and what that translates to in Java. So what I have here is the simplest possible Kotlin program, which is just hello world. And one of the first questions you might ask if you're coming from the Java background is, how does this top level function work? Because there, there is no enclosing class, which is actually a requirement in Java. So what we can do is go into tools, Kotlin, and then show Kotlin bytecode. And here is the actual bytecode generated, which is not typically human readable, but what is interesting is, is if you hit this decompile button. And just ignore this annotation metadata, which is something that the Kotlin compiler is adding. What we really care about is the source code. So here you can see, indeed, when we have the Java code, there is a generated class. And inside of that, just like you'd expect, we have a public static final void main. And that is where we have the system.out.println, which is much simpler in the Kotlin world. Let's take another look at one of my favorite language features of Kotlin, which is the data class. So we're defining here a data class person, which has two attributes, first name and last name. Both are of type string. And importantly, the last name is private, but the first name isn't. So that'll be interesting to see how the Java code generated changes because of that. And the value of a data class, just, just as a reminder, is that it will basically add in a bunch of utility functions like equals, to string, copy, automatically for us rather than us having to define it. So let's decompile the code and take a look at what it looks like. And so here, the interesting thing is we have these two attributes on the person, first name and last name. And the only one that we've got it for is the first name. And that's because the first name is actually available outside of the class, but the last name, we made it private. So that makes sense here. And then the other thing that you can check is that you have these functions defined for us, like copy, and it's checking that the parameters are non-null, just like you'd expect. And you have a two string, which is doing a string concatenation for us, and things like hash code or equals. And if we go back into the Kotlin source code, we could also add a one line function here. I said full name is equal to the concatenation of first name space last name. Now let's decompile. And we can see if we scroll down that we do get this generated function, full name, return type of string, and it's doing the string concatenation in the Java style. So going back into our Kotlin program, we can actually instantiate a person and then print out the full name. And let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm gonna decompile this code. And now in the public static final void main, we have this new keyword, which is something unique to Java. We're invoking this method full name, storing that into a variable, and then printing that out. So this is pretty much what you'd expect. I think where things get a little bit more interesting is when you have more custom Kotlin features and you want to explore how does that turn into Java code. So for example, we could do a for loop in this int range, which is what we're actually doing here. So we're saying starting from 10, going down to five, skipping every other integer, print out i. So this is gonna print out 10, eight, six. So if we decompile this, and this is where things get interesting because this down to and step, they're actually infix functions in Kotlin, which is something that we don't have in Java. So the generated Java code is actually quite interesting here because we're getting this int progression and we're getting first, last, and step. So in our example, it's 10, five, and two. We're doing some one-off checks at the top just to make sure that this is valid. And then we're saying while true, and we're basically iterating the variables here to print out i for each step in the int range. So a human probably wouldn't write code like this, but it's quite interesting to see 
what the equivalent Java code is for our program here. And if we run this, I can just show you uh, what this prints out, 10, 8, and 6, just like you'd expect. I hope that's helpful as a way to look at the corresponding Java code for the Kotlin that you write. Once again, what you do is go into Tools, Kotlin, Show Kotlin Bytecode, and then hit this Decompile button in order to see the corresponding Java code. And this can be really helpful if you're coming from a Java background and you want to see how various Kotlin language features turn into Java code. If you found this helpful, hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.